After watching this video, you should be able to analyze different pressure volume loops and compare preload, afterload, inotropic state, stroke volume, and ejection fraction. So now let's review the basics of the pressure volume loop. We see on the y-axis we have ventricular pressure in millimeters of mercury, and on the x-axis we have ventricular volume in mils of blood. And we start in this lower right corner where we have the end diastolic volume, the maximum volume, and the end diastolic pressure. So those two values make up that point. And as the ventricle depolarizes and, and begins its contraction, the AV valves close, the pressure rises for IVC, where the volume doesn't change until the ventricle pressure exceeds the minimum pressure in the great arteries, the diastolic pressure. We have ejection where the ventricle pressure reaches a max the systolic pressure, and then starts to fall, and the period of ejection ends at the end systolic pressure where the semilunar valves close, and then as the ventricle pressure falls and the volume remains the same, we have the period of isovolumetric relaxation until the pressure in the ventricle drops below the atrial pressure at the peak of the V wave, where we have the AV valves open, and that begins our period of ventricular filling and we see we move along back to the end diastolic volume. So the difference between the end diastolic volume and the minimum volume, the end systolic volume, is the stroke volume. Now we have a, a basic pressure volume loop with all the labels stripped away, and we see here that as the ventricle fills and we have that end diastolic pressure volume point, it lies on this diastolic pressure volume relationship, and that's drawn in for us and the end systolic pressure volume point is right there and we see the end systolic pressure volume relationship that line goes through that point and we started it here at about the origin and those two relationships are very important in analyzing changes in preload, afterload, and inotropic state. So let's start with the preload and we're going to take this end diastolic pressure volume point and we see if it moves along the diastolic pressure volume relationship that represents an increase in preload and if that point moves down the DPVR, that means the preload has gone down. And the preload represents the wall stress in the ventricle at the end of diastole, the end of filling. And so that point is very representative of that. The afterload, we think about the wall stress in the ventricle during ejection. And a good proxy for that is ventricular pressures during ejection. And we look at the end systolic pressure, give us an idea about that. If that goes up, the afterload has gone up. If that end systolic pressure has gone down, the afterload has gone down. Now, if the end systolic pressure stays the same, but the end systolic volume goes down, that represents a decrease in inotropic state. And if the end systolic pressure stays the same and that point moves to the left, that's an increase in inotropic state because there would be a shift in the ESPVR. Now we look at three different loops. PV loop B, PV loop A, and PV loop C, and the diastolic pressure volume relationship is drawn in for us, but the end systolic pressure volume relationship is not drawn in for us. And now let's take a look and compare preload, afterload, inotropic state or contractility, stroke volume, and ejection fraction. So let's start with the preload. So we can go to our loops and say, all right, well, we need to figure this out. We need to look at the end diastolic volume or pressure, and the end diastolic volume is a good thing to look at here. So we see for the PV loop C, that's at a very high end diastolic volume. And then PV loop A has a lower end diastolic volume, and PV loop B has an even lower end diastolic volume. So the wall stress in the ventricle at the end of diastole is highest for C and lowest for A because of those differences in the end diastolic volumes. So for the relationship between these different loops for preload, we have C is greater than A, which is greater than B. Now let's take a look at the afterload. Remember the wall stress in the ventricle during ejection, we can look at the pressures developed in the ventricle during ejection, and we can actually see the differences here, but let's look at the end systolic pressure, which gives us a good idea. So the end systolic pressure for PV loop C is the lowest at about there. For PV loop B, it's a little higher, so the end systolic pressure is about there. And for PV loop A, it's the highest at about there. So if we're gonna compare the afterloads, 
A is greater than B is greater than C. So now let's take a look at the inotropic state. And what we need to do is we need that end systolic pressure volume relationship, but it's not drawn in for us, so we need to draw it in. So let's take about at the origin and draw a line through the end systolic pressure volume point. So there it is for C. That's about where A would be. And then for PV loop B, that's the end systolic pressure volume relationship there. We can write those in. And you see that the inotropic state for B is greater than A is greater than C. Now let's take a look at the stroke volume, and that's the difference between the end diastolic volume, the maximum volume, and the minimum volume, the end systolic volume. And we see that the width of the PV loop is greatest for PV loop B, followed by A, followed by C. So if we were going to put those in, the stroke volume for B is greater than A is greater than C. Now for ejection fraction, remember that is the ratio of the stroke volume to end diastolic volume. So we already have the stroke volumes here, and we have the end diastolic volume. So for PV loop B, it has the biggest stroke volume and smallest EDV. And then for PV loop C, it has the smallest stroke volume and the largest EDV. So we would end up having the ejection fraction for B is greater than A is greater than C. So now that we've gone through all this, we see that for different PV loops, we can compare a lot of things. We can compare the preloads by looking at the end diastolic volume. We can compare the afterloads by looking at the end systolic pressures. We can look at the ESPVR slopes, and that tells us about inotropic state. And we often have to draw those in. We have the stroke volume, which is the difference between EDV and ESV. And then we have the ejection fraction, which is the ratio of the stroke volumes to the end diastolic volume. And that concludes this video on comparison of different PV loops.